Well, we're at the end of the world, and now we're going off the grid. The plane is jam-packed. I hope it gets off the ground. Dr. Greg Stone is one of the leading scientists in this field, and he's taking a team to one of the most remote corners of the globe as part of his latest research. It really is one of the last places that it's hard to get to. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at that. Hello, Canton. This is Canton Lagoon. We are in the heart of the Pacific Ocean. To get here, we had to fly to the furthest commercial destination that I'm aware of in the Pacific. And then from there, we chartered a plane to take us another four or 500 miles to here, Canton Island. Our closest human neighbors, well, they're up in the space station. Canton Island is part of the nation of Kiribati, right in the middle of the Pacific, 2,000 miles from Hawaii. It's at the center of the Phoenix Islands protected area. The size of California, this is one of the largest marine conservation parks in the world, renowned for its rich variety of marine life. And now we are uh, surrounded by coral reefs, we're surrounded by vast tuna herds, we're surrounded by whales and dolphins. All right, you guys have masks and uh, weight belts? Yeah. All that. It's all about air. Greg helped set up this marine protected area with the Kiribati government. Boom, 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 boom. It's like Spartica, faster. He and his team have traveled all the way out here because it is one of the best places on Earth to investigate the effects of climate change on the ocean. You know, there are so many threats that the ocean faces from humanity, overfishing, pollution, and climate change. But here in the Phoenix Islands protected area, we are so far from all the other threats from humanity that all the reef is experiencing is climate change, which makes it such a great laboratory for understanding this. And this is a critical moment. According to the latest satellite data, an El Nino may be forming, a natural event which temporarily warms local water temperatures, providing a glimpse into the future effects of climate change for the region. Ooh, it's a nice piece of coral right here. I like that. Kind of shallow. Yeah, let's, we'll go in around here. The scientists plan to record how the coral reefs here cope with a spike in temperature. They hope to find out how resilient these reefs might be to warming waters. The destruction of coral reefs as a result of climate change is disastrous for the ocean's ecosystem. So this is high stakes research. Let's get suited up, guys. Yeah, this looks pretty good. I guess we'll probably drop in right at the bow. Okay. It looks to me like the coral's in pretty good shape now, so we're in a good moment to, to get these instruments in the water. The plan is to install around 10 thermometers on the lagoon floor. What we've got here is a long-term underwater temperature recorder that will record the uh, sea temperature every 30 seconds for the next year or two. And we're going to fasten it to the reef, and these are buoys to help us find it a year or two from now, and this will enable us to understand the temperature changes. You get into the water and you feel the energy, the, the photosynthesis, the production of these amazing corals, and you look at them, and they're so vibrant. It's clear enough, though, so you can see everything. It's just like, wow, the ocean's alive. It's really a magical place. How was it? It's great. Coral's in good shape. Found a nice spot for the logger. I'm happy with that. I didn't see any grain or anything going wrong yet. So that's a good sign. I was afraid we'd see some bleaching already. Coral bleaching is one of the major kinds of damage inflicted by climate change. But previous research has suggested that the coral here has a rare ability to survive. We've witnessed two major bleaching events that have come through here. And when it first happened about 17 years ago, we were all so depressed because we thought that was the end of this spectacular system. Just very depressing, dead, 
brown, black, broken coral, and we, we almost needed Prozac to try to cheer ourselves up. It was so bad. But then it bounced back with incredible vigor. It was almost like finding someone who was almost dead, get up and walk the next week. Never had we seen a reef system respond like that. With another temperature hike potentially brewing, Greg is hoping this latest research will provide more evidence to suggest that this coral is equipped to resist climate change. One of the holy grails in climate and ocean and coral research is, is finding coral animals and, and other reef organisms that can withstand the heating that's happening now on the planet. But it looks like nature might have done it for us here in the Phoenix Islands. And it could be that this has applications throughout the world. It's not an understatement to say that perhaps the progenitors of future reefs in the world could lie here. They could actually become corals that could be moved elsewhere. Greg believes scientists should weigh the effort required to set up a marine protected area against its potential benefits. Which is why he would prioritize areas like this one with resilient corals. The picture is pretty dismal for rank and file coral reefs around the planet. And it's the ones that can withstand this heating, that can withstand these fluxes in the climate that we're looking for. And we've got to make tough choices now. We've got to pick those places that are going to have the biggest impact into the future.